Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Today I will show you how you can divide your different hair parts into different groups so it is much easier for you to edit the hair whether you're doing just a regular haircut or some kind of a complex one. This way it's going to be much easier. And of course please feel free to like, share and subscribe. It does help me a lot and I do actually appreciate it so... Why don't we start off by making what are called the vertex group. So first I will select the head and then on the object mode I will switch to the weight paint mode. And once I'm here what I want to do is go to the object data properties and make new vertex groups. So we can click the plus icon here to add one and to add another vertex group. And of course, while we are in the weight paint mode, we can switch between them. So the first vertex group will be one type of hair. So this will be short hair. And for the final hair part, it's going to be a mohawk. So I decided to do sort of a haircut, so all around the head will be the short hairs. And then we'll have a mohawk going in the middle part of the head. It's going to look pretty cool, so feel free and follow along. This is going to be very fun. So first things first, I want to select the short hair vertex group, which means when it is selected, we are painting on that group. And of course, before we paint, we want to make sure the weight is at 1. With F, you can scale up or scale down your brush. And then also make sure the Symmetry is enabled here. And then we can start painting. You can see when I do, I get something like this. So I'm just going to go all over the head and paint it full like this. You can make the brush a bit bigger. And for this, the best thing you can do is have a retopologized mesh. So you do not have much lag and it is optimized. And if you want some tips and tricks on retopology, feel free to check out one of my retopology videos. Yeah, you can see I'm painting this part. And if you're not sure how far the hairline goes, here's a simple trick which will help you out. So I will go with one to the front view. And let us measure the head. So from the upper part of the nose to the bottom of the chin is about this much. Then this circle, I'll just move it upwards from this part to this part. You can see it's almost the same size. And the same goes for the hairline. So from here to here, let me make this a bit smaller. So to here is going to be the hairline. Then I can also paint a bit on the side. And of course, do not worry, you can always tweak the hairs later. And this is just the general placement. Once you're happy with the result, you can switch to the other hair part. So now you can switch to the mohawk. And you can see the mohawk is a blank canvas. Here we can paint another vertex group. Or in other words, the middle part. So what I'm going to do is press 7 to go to the top view. Make this a bit bigger. And then I'll just start painting the line here. And I'll paint it to somewhere here. I can make this bigger, for example. And also, if you want to erase certain parts, the best way to do that is go up here to weight and then just switch the weight to zero. Now, whenever you paint, you're just going to erase the strokes. But so down here, I want it to be a bit thinner we get something like this and of course if you want an even better result you can always go here and use the blur brush so what it does is basically just smooths the fall off making it look nicer and also much better in reality and once we drew once we are happy with the result we can go back to the object node and now the fun part begins so we want to go up here to the particle properties 
And then we can click the plus icon to add hair. And of course, we need to configure some of the settings to get the hair. First here we have two options, either emitter, but we want to switch to the hair. And of course, when you do, the hair is going to be all over the place. And do not worry, we have those vertex groups which we painted now. We just need to tell Blender to use those vertex groups. So down here you want to go to the vertex groups, use the density, and then let us start off with short hair. When I pick short hair, you can see the hair is now only placed where it should be. It's looking pretty amazing. It can just get only better. Now the next thing I want to do is go to the emission. And here we can trick the general settings for the hair. For example, 1000 hair strands is too much. Let us decrease it to like 100. Or in this case we can even turn it up to 150. You'll understand why. And let us also make it a bit shorter. So for that I'll choose a value of like 0.0. .0 7. For you, it might vary on the size of your model, but I think this should work for me. And of course, you can see that the hair particles are almost the same color as our head, and we want to change it, so we need to make a separate material for the hair. We can do that by going down here to the material properties, and then what we want to do is click a plus icon. That will make a new material slot, and then let us click on new. Of course, you want to also click on use nodes. Here we have a simple setup. What I will do is I will go to the base color and I will actually choose like a reddish color and make it a bit darker, like this. I mean, your choice. And then let us go back to the particle properties. And the option which we want to choose is actually render. Down here we have the material. And from skin, I'm going to switch it to material 001. Or if you can, you can go up here to the material and just rename it to hair. So you know this is the hair material and you can see now it also says it here. And of course, there are a few more things we want to configure with the hair. So it will be nice that we go to the children. And that is how we are going to add more hair particles. So when I select children, and select interpolated, you can see now we have much more hair particles and it is already looking much better. Down here under the display amount, we can control how many hairs we want. Let us try 20. It's looking actually pretty cute. I like it. And one more thing before we begin editing the hair manually, is that we can go to the view per display and increase the strand steps to at least 4. That way, by increasing this value, the hair will look very smooth when we groom it. It behaves sort of like a subdivision modifier for the hair. And now, how do we groom the hair? Well, we just go up here to the object mode, and down here we have a new tab called Particle Edit. Once we enter it, we have this circle here. We have many options, such as the comb hair, which is the one we are going to use. And with it, you can just drag along, just comb the hair wherever you want it to be. So we can just push it a bit downwards. Make it fall sort of a curve. And then I'm also going to use another brush, which is called a puff brush. So with it. You can see I'll be raising the hairs a bit, so it is not just sticking to the top of the head. Okay, it's looking pretty interesting, and once we are happy with the result, let us go back to the object mode. So here what I'm going to do is add another particle system, so make sure you're in the particle properties. And then I'll click on the plus icon and it is time for us to add a mohawk. So the process is going to be pretty similar, but the switch to the hair. Of course, hair is all over the place. Do you remember what you need to do now? Yep, you need to go to the vertex groups 
and choose the density. This time we are going to use the Mohawk. And you can see we already have one, but it's a bit too big. So let us also edit it under emission. I'm going to choose the lower number, for example, 200. And then hair length, I'll put it to like 1.6. Let us see how big is that. For now, it is pretty good because in the particle edit mode, we can even trim it if we want to. Now, let us also change the color of the hair. So under render, let us choose the hair material. And it's looking pretty nice for hair. It's pretty good to use darker colors. So you just get this nice accents. Okay, now in the viewport display, when it comes to strand steps, I will actually put it to at least 5, so we get a pretty nice result when we comb the hair. And now the last part is we need to change the children. Bring in the children! I'm going to choose interpolated. And you can see it looks again much, much better. And one more thing that I'm going to do, that we did not do for these little hairs, is I'm going to just go to the clumping part, so it is under the children, clumping. I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure that the clumping is all the way up to 1. And you can see what that does. It just makes it look much more spiky, which is exactly the look I'm going for. And with that set, we can go to the particle edit mode. And then comb the hair. You can see when I do so, it just behaves very nicely. I'm going for a sort of a hairstyle like this. Let me just first comb it. And then of course you can play with the scissors like this. You can just make it very very small and cut off certain parts of the hair to make it more messy. And the more time of course you spend here, the more realistic and nice the hairstyle will be. So feel free and have fun with this. Like this, I'm just going to trim it off a bit, maybe this one. And of course make sure to go from all the sides. So for this I'm going to go to the front view. And I'm just going to comb it a bit to the middle. Let's also then go from the side. Like this. Make sure it is also nice from this side. For example, this little hair here. I'm just going to grab the scissors and trim it so I do not have any problems. And the good thing is when I'm editing the Mohawk, those little hairs are not affected because they are in a different vertex group and they are a different particle system. And for me, this way is much easier than having it all together. Like this. I'm going to comb it here. Feel free to make it a bit wavy, so the hair is almost never perfect. So the more wavy it is, the better it's going to look like. And now let us also trim it a bit. I'm going to just make it shorter in overall. And then once again I'll comb it. Also make the front part a bit shorter. Let us also try the puff brush. You can see that also does, does a nice job. And of course the best part about this process is we can always go back to the children and increase the number of them, for example to 12. And then feel free when you just change a value here to click on the hair so it changes. For example if I switch this to 5. I need to click on the hair to see the actual changes. So this I'll put to like 15. Click on the hair to see the changes. And then even from here we can switch to the short hair system. And here we can also change them. So I'm just going to increase the number of the little children. Little children. To 
25. Let us see how that looks. Much, much better. Let's go to the object mode to see it without any outlines. It's looking pretty funky. Gives me a sort of cyberpunk feel to it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. And well, I hope to see you in the future videos. Bye bye!